is the postseason, and the drive to December is underway in the regional quarterfinals. Good evening, good people. I'm Theo Dorsey. This is ESPN West Palm High School game day, and let's get right to it. We know where the road ends. A state champion will be crowned in nine different classifications out in Tallahassee next month, but it begins tonight as 18 area teams take the wheel for some playoff football. How about we start with the shocker of the night in the game of the week? The West Boca Bulls traveling to the Atlantic Eagles. Atlantic pointing the, their fingers right at the squad out the gate, but they talk back as well. It sure looked like with the first quick touchdown there, Jaden Parrish, Eagles up 7-zip. Later in the possession, Bulls come up with a big interception. Aaron Ford, have a night. A few plays later, the star running back of the Bulls, JV and Mallory, you've heard the name, and if you haven't, well, allow me to reintroduce him to you. Look at the moves. That's a game-tying touchdown right there. We're going to fast-forward all the way to the last few seconds, though. It's incredible finish. West Boca down six. Last play of regulation, and they heave one up for dear life. Look at this ball. It, it's caught. It's caught. West Boca, the seventh seed, upsetting uh, Atlantic, the two seed. The unthinkable happens there. The freshman kicker, John Farfin, seals the deal. The Bulls, they win it. A shocker, a huge shocker. The big upset over Atlantic, 23-22, getting their first playoff win since 07, handing the Eagles their first playoff home loss since 08. The 2M Region 3 Somerset Canyons uh, in the FHSAA playoffs for a debut game for them in this side of the postseason play. They're at Kings Academy. Check out this connection right here. I mean, Joe to his main guy, and he's done that a few times. On the other side of it, that's Joe Daly to JV and Jones. A big-time hookup right here for Somerset Canyons. Tegan Brisky went up top for the big first down, but it was all Lions in this one. I mentioned Joe Daly earlier. Here he is, heaving it up to his guy, JV, and again down the seam, and it sets up a 19-yard QB sneak for Joe Daly himself. Sometimes when, when you guys aren't open or if it's a designed QB run, you just take it in for six. 49-7, Kings Academy wins their prize. A road trip to Plantation to take on one seed American Heritage. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot. I mean, we've been trying to figure out when's the last time we won one. Um, so, you know, that'll be a, you know, as the year's gone on, that'll be a, a, a step in the right direction from a program perspective. So it'd be great. 2001, that's the last time St. Lucius actually won a postseason game. The Chiefs would have to fight for that W tonight as they hosted five seed Palm Beach Gardens. Real quick, before the scoring, this was the potential play of the week as we had the drama at Atlantic. Jamar Browder hauling in the double reverse pass and then drawing the defensive P.I., but back to the game, uh, Santa Lucius would find the early lead, 28-14 in the third quarter, but the Gators would rattle back. They led by two touchdowns thanks to Keon Stevens going to the fourth of tied ball game. Santa in need of a big play, and Browder, <laughs> he made it happen. The Chiefs went up seven on that one, and that will be the deciding score because the Gators fumbled the ball away late. Santa Lucius wins 35-28, to their first playoff victory since 0-1. They'll take on number one Monarch in the region semis next week. Jupiter. They're going to try to make some more noise in this shocker of a season right now. Taking on Boca Raton at home. And here they are extending their lead to 14 to 7. Luke Douglas, you heard the name all year. Well, that touchdown symbol, he's been making the refs do that. They're going to get their arms tired calling touchdowns Warriors uh, the way they've been scoring it this year. Second quarter. Jupiter adding on to the lead, but then the Bobcats would come roaring and storming back. They would get interceptions, which led to touchdowns, complimentary football, and wouldn't you believe it, in this magical season, the magical run the Jupiter Warriors have been on, the Bobcats come and steal the day in the first round of the playoffs. They win this one 48-41 on the road. The Bobcats moving on. Let's skip over to Spanish River, Palm Beach Central. Central ended their season in the semifinal last year. They're trying to get back. Starts here. Their guy, Caleb Butler, first season starting. He's starting his first playoff game. He finds a man down the sideline for the huge gain. And then here it is right here, very next play. Nedrick Bolden, where you at? There I am. And there is six. 
for the Broncos of Palm Beach Central. Caleb Butler, Will, and Dylan. Here's an interception, though. Spanish River trying to fight back. This squad hasn't been in the playoffs for 22 years. They want to make some plays and make a game out of it. But this would be all Palm Beach Central. Tony, Tony, Tone <laughs> with the big-time interception. And the Broncos would hold serve at home. They're going to move on, advancing to the regional semifinal, one game away from another regional final appearance. St. Andrews. Let's go to some of the games that we didn't get a chance to get out to tonight. St. Andrews had a nine-win season that ends in the first round. They fall 20-13 to to Calvary Kit, uh, Christian, whereas uh, the Dixie County squad ran into a, a brick wall trying to fight against those Pahokee Blue Devils. They win 49-zip. Pahokee going to go on the road to face Willison uh, in round number two. Jensen Beach, what a rock-solid season from them. They, they weren't allowing points, just 51 all season, but they lose against Rockledge 19-16. And Treasure Coast shuts out Osceola at home, 28-zip. They are going to host Vero Beach next week in a regional semifinal that's going to have all the buzz. And speaking of Vero, let's take a look at how they did tonight. Taking care of business on the road. 28-17, the Fighting Indians win over Heritage. You know, Treasure Coast won that regular season matchup this year. It's one of the best rivalries we have in the 7-7-2. The Indians will be looking for uh, revenge in this postseason. And Fort Pierce Westwood had a rematch with Sebring. Unable to get it done. 48-zip uh, the final. The Panthers' season ends with seven wins. Okay, whew, that was a mouthful. I'm running out of breath. But we're also starting to run out of team. We only got eight area squads left in the state title run. Uh, when we come back, Two area coaches with multiple state championships to their name, they answer a valid question. Why has it been so long since this area has hoisted the big trophy? Stick around. Now, a lot has happened since the year 2013. In fact, one thing that hasn't, though, is the FHSAA state title for one of our area football teams. We caught up with a pair of head coaches in the area familiar with that feeling of bringing a state championship home and also with a feeling about how we can get rid of the drought. In 2013, the Dwyer Panthers, led by Jack Daniels, brought home a state title. But getting to that mountaintop involves the little things going right for a team. You have to have a really good close-knit team, which we did in 2013, which was the last state championship. And we weren't as talented as our 2009 team, but we, they, were, they were together and they played together. And we had, we had an overtime win in the, in the state semis and uh, some close games through the way, so you have to be lucky, too. Hector Clavijo has a pair of state titles to his name while he coached in Dade County. When he looks at those state championship wins, the calendar flipping to November shows a lot about those championship teams. I'm, I'm a big believer in everything can go right now. You know, um, there's been years where we've been, you win seven, eight, nine games, and there was a year we won five games and still made it to the state championship. So for me, it's about clicking right now, being healthy, um, and just kind of getting all the pieces to fall in place. Since the Dwyer win in 2013, it's been rough for our area. We've seen Pahokee have to vacate a title, American Heritage, Atlantic, Oxbridge, and the Kings Academy all failed in the title game. Daniels and Cavijo see the issues in the area pretty similarly. Because a lot of the player, really good players from Palm Beach County are leaving Palm Beach County. Uh, Shamanad's snatching kids up, St. Thomas. Um, they've reached out. There's a uh, there's also a lot of really good players down south in Dade and Broward. And, and um, you know, that's where all the state championships are being won. The, the talent is diluted, you know. Um, there's kids, you know, every school has their share of kids in comparison to, like, South Florida where there's five schools that have all the kids. So, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to win the big one when everybody else really is, is, you know, putting all the kids in one place. Will this year be the year that the drought finally ends? A state title being on the bus ride home from Tallahassee could mean a ton for this area. It would mean a lot. Um, it's just tough. Like, it, it's tough right now because we're, we're, we're part of the Metro, which is still with Dayton Broward. Um, but I think that, you know, Eric, Benjamin, and myself here and some other good public schools are, are doing a good job of uh, keeping kids here. So, I mean, that's what we need to continue to do. Right on with that. And shout out to the Fort Pierre Westwood Panthers, our Baptist Health 
Orthopedic Care Sports Performance of the Week goes to that squad for what they pulled off in the regular season finale. They took down Boca Raton. They won their final game of the regular season going 7-3, and three, and they get a $500 check. Congratulations to them as they made it into the postseason. Well, that's going to do it for us. For this edition of the Sports Zone, I'm Theo Dorsey. Have yourself a good night.